Hi there! Before I start, I would love to let you know about the new initiative I've started with Federico Iacchetti. This is a brand new podcast named Content for Devs. It's focused on topics related to creating content of any sort for developers. In the bi-weekly episodes, we will talk about producing screencasts, podcasting, blogging, writing, creating newsletters, and whatever you can imagine when it comes to content creation. All that to inspire you to publish what you know and share with the world. We are going to invite amazing guests who will share with us their secrets of driving successful businesses. Moreover, they will tell us about behind the scenes of content creation, which is this iceberg hidden behind any single publication. Finally, we are going to stream those sessions and publish forms collecting questions from the audience so you will have tons of chances to interact with us and our guests directly. If you like this idea, make sure you follow our Twitter or Mastodon at content for devs and let us know if you like it. Now to the episode. With Hanami 2.0 being released, there is now a lot of cool stable stuff we can cover in our screencasts. And one of them is something I was planning to tell about for a while already. Slices. A brand new Hanami application comes with the app folder, from which all components are automatically registered in the container. For small applications, this works pretty well. However, you can organize your app in different ways, which Hanami encourages by design, and that can be very useful in working with bigger code bases. You can do so by extracting parts of your code into slices. Slices are very much independent parts of your application. They import a few general components from the mine app, but other than that, they can be prepared and booted independently from other slices. This opens nice opportunities of deploying different parts of your application without loading any unnecessary gems and components. You can also import and export components from other slices if you want. But how to organize such modules in my applications? Well, there are a few ways, from which I like two the most, and this is what I will cover in this video. If I have an application that consists of the client-facing module, mostly optimized for reading, API module, and the admin module, where most of the app updates happens, I can use a separate slice for each of them. And when I'm working with API, I don't need to even load view-specific code or gems. Then the same can apply to configuring different CI paths and running specs for different parts of my system. Adding a new slice in Hanami 2.0 is extremely easy thanks to the generators Hanami 2.0 came with. I have here the scaffold application already created and to add an API slice, I just need to run a command Hanami generate slice API. It added a new slice for me by creating a few files under slices slash API folder. It also updated the router to properly handle requests under a specific namespace. Let's check it out. First of all, in the router's config file, there is a slice method called now with a block added. Inside, I can place all my routes that should be served by my slice. They all will be namespaced under the slash API URL. Then in the slices folder, you can see an API directory. Inside, I can define all my API related actions, serialization logic, and so on. You can see here that the structure is almost identical to the mine app folder. And therefore, it's quite intuitive to work with slices from the start. Had you noticed the capitalized API module name here? The word API is automatically recognized as an acronym by the pre-configured inflector, which I had talked about in the episode 4. Make sure you check it out if you want to know more. With this inflector pre-configured, you can define modules with more intuitive syntax, even though the file names can remain unchanged. I love this attention to details Hanami team shows by giving us these smile touches here and there. However, my application will also have the admin panel where I'm going to place all my views related to administrating with my list of books. Let me create the admin slide then. The admin folder has been created and you can see that also some sample test examples have been added to the spec folder. 
Finally, I can also provide the very narrow functionality of presenting books to the community. I'm going to add one more slice named main. However, this time I'm going to explicitly overwrite the URL my slice is mounted upon. And done. Let me put a disclaimer here. For such a small application, you might think that it's over engineering and I won't argue too much. This episode is mostly to show you how you can organize your code in a way your application will scale up well without problems in the future. Let me generate a few actions now so we can present our concepts better. First, I'm going to add a new endpoint to my admin panel where I will be able to unsubscribe people from new book reviews and publishing. When I browse my files, you will see that the action had been added to the admin slice and in the roots, an HTTP method had been set to delete. Then having that, I will need a few endpoints to interact from the API. I will allow people to subscribe and unsubscribe freely, as well as listing some books. Finally, I will have a dashboard when I only show list of reviewed books. Now let me open the roots RB file to check how it all looks now. I can have multiple roads generated in different slices, but as I have set up my books list to be loaded under the root URL, I will remove the duplicated definition from the top of the file. When I will run a server and send a delete request to the API slash books slash unsubscribe URL now, as a response, I will get the action class name. This is what each action come with when generated automatically. Similar thing will be done for the admin namespace. This shows us that our application recognizes this URL and serves it properly. To preview the code, let me open an action file. Of course, you can extend this functionality if you wish, but in this episode, I just want to focus on the slices feature. At this point, you probably think, okay, but why? It's just namespacing, isn't it? Well, there is more. Let me show you now what all that does for our component registration by opening Hanami console. I can list my apps registered components by accessing the keys method on it. For slices, we have similar access point, but we need to call a slice constant on the slices um, name module instead of the app. Each slice has separate set of components registered in the container. So if we will use separate Docker containers for different modules, we can, for example, load API without the whole view related code even being loaded. This can significantly reduce the boot time, deployment, resources usage, tests, runs, and so on. However, can you spot some issues here? Splitting slices by the type of interface can be useful, but even in this little example, you can already see that a lot of logic here will be duplicated and could be shared between admin and API modules. This brings us to the other way of splitting our application based on the business domain. Let's assume I have the part of the system that allows people to subscribe to my book reviews. This part of my business domain would be named subscribing. This slice would not be created based on the access points from the system, but based on the business logic it contains. Inside there would be not stored any rendering logic nor HTTP serving. All that is either API or web specific. This subscribing slice would contain a list of service objects or interactors that would update my internal application state, send emails, trigger callbacks, and so on. Let me add just two of them. I don't want to go into the logic here, sorry, because I only want to focus on the code organization part in this episode. So how this slice could be useful for us? Well, one benefit from doing it could be that we can import all the components into any slice we want. We can use our interactors in both API and admin panel while maintain the HTTP handling separately. To do this, I just need to add the slice specific configuration files. I'm going to allow people to subscribe themselves for book reviews and unsubscribe from them freely. However, for my admin panel, I don't want any of my employees to accidentally subscribe anyone against their will, so I only allow to unsubscribe people who already subscribed. 
I will rename the subscribing slice in the admin context to subscriptions just to show this functionality. With this, I can open my actions and access my imported interactors freely from there. Let me open the API subscribe action and add the new interactor to it. Then repeat the same for the admin module. Now sending the request to each of the URLs will return the name of included component to prove it's loaded properly. Importing components across slices is just one thing, but you can do even more with them. You can list slices that should be loaded in your cluster and all the rest will be ignored. This way, I can configure my list of slices using environment variables and only parts of my application will be loaded depending on my configuration. Let me show it very quickly. Now, if I will open my Hanami console, I will not have main nor admin slices available anymore. This brings a whole set of opportunities to developing scalable applications in Ruby without the need to slow down development when the code base grow. Slices in Hanami are insanely powerful, allowing us to completely control how and where our application is loaded, which dependencies are resolved and set up, reduced duplication and coupling. There are multiple ways you can organize your slices in, but I hope those two ideas I have just shown you will give you some portion of inspiration. Unfortunately, that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content in this fashion, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the notification bell. You can also subscribe to the newsletter and follow me on Mastodon or Twitter. I want to especially thank my recent sponsors, Proly.com, Akila Siemane, and Bill Tichen for supporting this project. I really appreciate it. If you know other great gems you wish me to talk about or have an amazing idea for upcoming episodes, please open a discussion using the GitHub discussion threads you can find at the bottom of any published article. And if you want to support us even more, check out our GitHub sponsors page or join Hanami Mastery Pro to gain access to more learning resources and our private Discord channel. As usual, here you can find two of my previous videos. Thank you all for supporting our channel and watching. You are awesome and have a nice rest of your day.